Morning everyone, welcome to another Workout Wednesday, the third Workout Wednesday I've done so far on this channel. It's very bright in here, that's better. Okay, so yeah, third Workout Wednesday, like I said, we've done a run, we've done a bike, we're going to do a swim today. Now, makes it a little bit difficult because the UK has been in a lockdown for what feels like ages now. Um... And I don't know about the rest of the world, but probably in a similar position where you're unable to swim. So why, why, how, how am I going to run through a swim session when you can't do it? Well, there are plenty of things to do, even though you still can't get in the pool. Also, another exciting thing about this episode is it's going to be the first episode that I do with another coach. So like I said in the past, for those of you that are new to the channel, for those of you that haven't heard much about these workout Wednesdays. It's a way of me giving you the most value possible. As a coach myself, I want to go through a session every single Wednesday. I want to give you value. I want to tell you why you need to do the session, when you can do it, and what the session is. But I do not want to stand here in front of the camera and pretend like I'm the be all and end all and I know everything because that is incredibly arrogant, incredibly short-sighted of me. We can always learn something new. We can always better ourselves. And that's what I want to do, not just as an athlete, as a coach. I want to be the best coach possible. And the way you do that is you educate yourself. You learn from others. You learn from people that are better than you. Well, I've got a coach on who I very much respect today. He's a very good friend of mine, Callum Hughes. I've done videos with him in the past. I'll link to those above if I can. Um, and he's going to run through a swim band session. I need to jump on a Zoom call with him. Um... And I'm already running late. So let's just go and do it. Hey everyone, so uh, finally, after a little bit of twiddling around and me not knowing what I'm doing, we finally got Callum on the screen. Um, hey Callum, how you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks Harry, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Not too bad. Um, now, I know you've been on the channel before. Like We've done a bit of bike fitting stuff, some really cool videos. Um, but for those kind of new subscribers to the channel, the new viewers who might not know who you are, um, I know we've had you on the podcast as well. Um, do you want to just give a little kind of brief overview of who you are and what you do? Yep. Um, my name's Cam Hughes. I'm the, I guess, uh, manager, director, owner of Velo Clinic Bike Fitting, bike fitting Studios. <clears throat> but you also do triathlon coaching as well. Um, I've been doing bike fitting for seven years, probably fitted over 1,600 people. Majority of them are triathletes because I'm triathlon, I guess, biased. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, quite a lot of people, making people faster, more comfortable, and just looking at all-round progression from, you know, from, from everything we can do rather than thinking one-sided, trying to look at the mobility and, and how your sport is going to move from one to the other, really. And then the holistic approach and the same for our coaching and managing our athletes nice nice yeah um and a little bit of a hint towards some really exciting stuff we're going to do before we get into the, the meat and potatoes of the video um callum and i are planning on doing a really cool kind of series which will again like look to educate and give you guys the most value possible um with regards to like knowledge on i guess we call it like bike fitting and, and stuff like that like simple videos that, that are kind of maybe more like how-to videos and just more in-depth stuff, trying to get as much knowledge out of you as possible. Um, yeah, yeah. To, well, if anybody to has any other yeah, topics they want us to cover, just let us know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If there are, yeah, like Carl said, specific topics, let us know. Um, I am going to be referring to my phone, so um, yeah, apologies for that because I've written down some questions. So I want to make sure I get them in. Um, so we're looking at doing a, a swim session today. Obviously, it's pretty difficult, isn't it? Because UK is in lockdown. People haven't been yeah. in the pools, like... Um, so what can you do? Um, and kind of like, I, I know there's band work and band work to be honest, in my opinion is so boring. Are there kind of some little tips that you can give to people to make it a little bit more enjoyable? <laughs> totally. Um, don't, don't suffer. Like number one, don't <laughs> suffer. Like it really is. So many people will try to do bands and they'll try to do, they'll try to replicate their set. So if you give your athlete 10 times 100, they'll go, right, I've got to do 10 times whatever their 100 metre time is. So if it's two minutes, they're going to go, I've got to do 10 times two minutes of bands with 10 seconds rest. And they'll be like, set one, like in rep one, their arms will blow up, shoulders yeah. blow up. And they'll be laying on the floor going, why am I doing this? 
um and that's that is number one fail like that's that's the one thing you don't do um and probably the easiest way to do it is do it to fatigue and you are your biggest critic so when you're on you know when you're doing swim bands you can say actually my form's going i'm gonna stop take a short break and pick those bands up again 30 40 seconds there when you feel like you're moving again you can breathe and and you're not like hindered in any way like you're not tight or moving the wrong way um that's that's that is the biggest thing to do don't try and re- replicate your sessions that you do in the pool because if you give somebody four times 1k for an iron, <laughs> iron, iron athlete four times 20 minutes doing swim bands are you joking savage. Like, no, it doesn't work. yeah savage absolutely savage yeah okay cool nice um so we're gonna structure this the same way i've been doing the the workout Wednesdays, the last couple is, um, so we're going to go through the why, um, the, the when, and then right at the end, kind of like what the actual session is and Callum can go through specifics of that. So first of all, Callum, um, why should athletes do this particular session and kind of what are the benefits that they would get from it? So we are, most of us are amphibious. Um, I don't know about you, but swimming didn't come naturally to me. Uh, the biggest part was you get chucked in the water or you ju- you, you jump in the water <laughs> and you're trying to breathe so you're always trying to get your face out of the water it's really hard to focus on you know your movement and where your where your arms and legs are and what you're trying to do when you're panicking for breath um, quite a lot of people especially triathletes will say they don't like the swim so if we take you out of the water we focus on your movement the swim movement without you know getting you to hold your breath and throw water in your face um, it makes it a much more controlled event. You don't have this fight or flight response. You can relax. Um, so the why is getting the correct muscle movement. So you, you can create the muscle memory you want. Uh, you can work on any part of your stroke. So if you feel you've got a weakness with your catch, if you feel you've got a weakness with your pull, you feel you've got a weakness at the end of your stroke with the push, the hard part is to work on your recovery because you can't really do that with a band. It's always pulling you. Um, so recovery is is more your mobility and how you are but your recovery is hampered by your position in the water so your body alignment will change based on how you're stroking anyway like so if you're if you're panicking through your stroke your you know your recovery is going to be rushed and panicked anyway it's not going to be how you want it to be that's probably the the biggest part is to try and try and get the benefit of you getting better through movement so how should i be moving in the water and a lot of a lot of coaches might say or swim coaches might say try and feel the water and we go and chuck a wetsuit on. <clears throat> Most wetsuits have got a nice little bit here that's a bit thinner on your forearm to feel the water. But you, it's very rare that you'll feel the water. So yeah. stop trying to search for that elusive. You, if you ask a golfer to, to you know, how many times have they that, you know, that elusive best golf swing, it's probably like once in 100 to 200,000 swings or something crazy. And we're looking for that, feel the water every time we get in the pool. Stop thinking about it. Stop fretting. Um, cool. Yeah, break things down to be simple. So if you look at your stroke as three parts, just like we said, catch, pull, and push, um, those three parts are very, very basic, and we can make them basic with movements in terms of how we pull on the resistance bands. Break them down, look, video yourself, watch it over, and go. Actually, yeah, I'm not. I I can see I can't do that on dry land. How am I going to do that in the water? And then what's you know what's what's the restriction? Is it your mobility? Is it your strength in range? Is it your body alignment and position? And yeah, go from there really. Nice, nice. I really like that. Um, so moving on then to when, so as a coach, like when would you prescribe this specific session or for people out there who are looking to kind of take on this session and put it in their, their week, um, when do you think they should do it in their week? When do you think they should do it in their day to kind of maximise the benefits? Yeah, so you could do this before anything easy. So if you wanted to put it before a bike or after a bike or before a run or after a run, your body's already warmed up or you're warming up your body to to get out and move anyway. Um, you don't need to do it for hours, like we said earlier. So you could do a five minute session or you could do a, a 30 minute, 45 minute session. It doesn't have to be that long at all. Um, so you you can put it in your, in your week any way you want, but don't put it before hard runs and hard bikes. Okay, yeah. obvious reasons. Yeah, <laughs> you want to get the most benefit out of those hard. Yeah, don't do it before your your FTP ramp test. <laughs> yeah. that, would that would not have be been printed. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and I, I would try and put that in my week as mu- not as much as I could, but small amounts until you get that fatigue and you feel like oh, okay, yeah, I can't do it the correct form anymore, or your your feel of correct form because everybody's got a different form anyway. Um, and then stop, move on to the next the next session, or you know. If you've got five yeah. minutes spare, 
if there's adverts on the TV, you know, my, my, bizarrely, mine are always tied to the banister rail. So, you know, if there's something on TV I'm not liking to watch, I just do a bit of spin bands for five minutes and, you know, switch your mind off or something, just focus yeah. on something else. I like um, I like what you what you said there is like kind of little and often. Um, I think that's super important with with sort of anything really kind of strength related. I've definitely made the mistake in the past of kind of going into it full whack and absolutely smashing myself yeah. for 45 minutes to an hour and then you're dead for the next couple of days you're like oh, I don't want to do it again <laughs> massively massively the biggest yeah. thing and I, I I always tell people this in a in a bike fit or you know if I'm talking to anybody in general us triathletes we are a nightmare if I say to you and I always I always use this as a great a great like a point so if I say to you, you'll get better glute med activation, like if you're doing like stuff to get your run work better, you'll get better glute med activation with a, a one minute side plank and you'll get like 80% muscle recruitment from your glute med and glute med, everybody's always talking about trying to get their glute med more stable for the run. So every time I say that to a triathlete, they go in their head, they go, I'm going to do it for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> You don't get 300% extra. You, you can't get more than the 80%. The minute is where they figured out, like it's a scientific study. That, this is, I always take this number from a scientific study. But us triathletes, whatever we say, if we say go and do some swim bands, we go, I've got to do an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, and it's not about that. It's actually about stepping back and just going, let's just do five minutes because that can still hurt and it yeah. can still add what our stroke's going to look like when we get back in the water. Yeah. Nice. No, I think that's really good. Um, so finally, what everyone's waiting for, um, what is the session? If you could go through it kind of step by step and I'll write it, I'll make sure I write it on the screen for everyone. If you don't mind, um, if people could like screenshot yeah, 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 it, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fine. So I, I always try to do a bit of mobility <clears throat> and that could be something where you're trying to get your, your shoulders to twist independently of your hips. So working on your thoracic spine, so really good for run. Um, so I'd always look at trying to get some twisting. Um, you've, you've seen those cat cow bridges when you're on all fours and you're trying to make a really big tall back and then a really like lovely curve as well. So you're trying to get your, your shoulders and your back actually working from your pelvis to your shoulders. You want this nice curve, everything nice and smooth to open up your spine better. I then do um, what what in yoga, it's baby um, a child pose where you've got your hands out in front of you and then you're trying to sit your bottom on your feet. Um, from there, I'd then also work on my feet a bit more. I'd sit up. I try and get my foot flat. So let me get let me get my feet out for a second. Hold on. So runners are going to be having feet like this, and I would actually try and sit on my foot on the floor. So okay. almost sit in my bottom on my foot to try and flatten my foot as much as I can. Don't make that hurt. That should be <laughs> nice and gentle. Just us triathletes, we try and do things too, you know, too gung ho yeah. and try and crush our ankle. Um, it should be a light stretch. It shouldn't feel anything tense. Um, so you've got twist. You've got activation of your spine, and then you want to activate your shoulders. So, you know, shoulder circles forwards and backwards. You know, 30 seconds forwards, 30 seconds backwards, take a rest, and then do it again. 30 seconds forwards, 30 seconds backwards. Build that in so that you've got fifth, up to 15 minutes of movement. You could do that in five minutes. You could do it in 15. So you can, you know, enhance the session if you want, shrink it, and whatever time you've got available. So if you've got a 15-minute session available, five minutes mobility, five minutes, you know, warming the shoulders up and then five minutes of, of swim strokes. Uh, from from the mobility, I, de I then try and warm up a bit better. So it is more shoulder circles, trying to get my hips connected to my shoulder, which always sounds strange. So you're, you've got a sling that works from shoulder to hip. And if, you're, if your shoulder's not working, your hip's not working. Um, and if your hip's not working, your shoulder's not working. So we, we don't think about it enough as us, us as a whole as to what is activated. So we want to do things if you're laying on your back, we, I call it dead bug, and you move one arm back, keeping the other arm there. So you're laying on your back on all fours, like legs and arms up, one goes back, and then the other one goes back. Does that make sense? So alternate nice. arms and legs are, are dropping towards the floor. That's going to be a core activation, but also switching on the movement from hip to shoulder. Um, and then I do on all fours, doing similar movement, where you get your, if you're on all fours, doing that cat-cow bridge again. Um you then get your knee to touch, opposite knee to elbow, and then away. Okay. So you're almost stretching out one side, okay. knee to yeah. elbow, stretching out the other side, knee to elbow. It's hard to try and demonstrate it and <laughs> talk about it. Um, that, would, that would be the things I try to do before I then do the swim stroke. And then a very easy session, and something I actually did yesterday, was 10 times 20 strokes. That's, that's a very, cool. very easy session on paper. 
<laughs> when you do swim <laughs> yeah. bands, that is a hard session. Okay. So I, I, I do something. I always try to change it up. So I do 10, like 10 strokes on each arm, alternate strokes. So 20 in total. And then I do 10 double strokes. So almost like butterfly. Um, where you're doing both both arms at the same time. I call that a power stroke because it does make me feel powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just try and focus on, you know, where my hand's moving. And that'd be the session I'd do at the end. The the middle part is quite key. So you've got your warm-up, like mobility, and you've got your fitness block. The bit in the middle is going to get your body to do the end bit right and tie in mobility to your fitness. So you really want to focus on your drills. So like I said about doing maybe a catch drill, a you know, a pull drill, so where you're focusing on the middle part of the stroke, so here downwards, and then a push drill, which is your, your triceps and, and arm extension. Those key parts, and a lot of people rush their, their catch just because they're they haven't got the strength there to go slow. And that's the the hard part is telling people to slow down to speed up. The more you can catch at the the start of your stroke, the more you, water you can push all the way through the end of your stroke. So spend you know three times ten, just doing ever so slight catch drills. So if you're literally just trying to bend your wrist, bend your elbow, and pull the band until you get towards your shoulder, and then stop, come back, and it it feels really light. Mm. But if we tell the muscles what to do, you know all of the muscles around the shoulder into the back, your hand, that memory of wrist, elbow, shoulder. All of a sudden, when you do your strokes later on, your body just does it in the way that you've just told it how to do it. Mm-hmm. Whereas when we get to a swim pool, we don't we don't do that at all. We just jump in and we go, <laughs> I've got to swim this set. Um, so the biggest change I try, I try to tell people is when you get back to swimming, do the same thing with your swim. Create a pyramid, do 50 meters, 100 meters, 150, 200. At any point, if your form goes, stop and drop the set back again. So then you could always work yourself back up that pyramid. So you're literally going up, coming down. And when the form goes, shorten the set. So you're trying to do everything with good movement. Um, you've lifted weights. And I know you lift, you're still lifting weights because you've now got a strength plan with Scott, uh, which is, that's like superb. It's the same with that. You wouldn't continue lifting anyway if you had bad form. Yeah. I actually, well, I did it the Why other day, you? actually. It's, <laughs> it's So I was doing some deadlifts and I realized my form completely went. I wasn't doing anything like correctly, to be honest. And so I just called it a day. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing it. I don't want to injure myself. <laughs> when have you ever done that in the pool when your form has gone? Never. Literally never. It's always, oh, I'm tired. I need to swim harder. <laughs> That's it, yeah. I need to try harder. I need to make this time. Yeah. Chances are, if you're not making the times you want to, your form is probably gone. Yeah. And it's, you know, you're just making more work for yourself. So stop and get out. Um, if yeah. you're if you're practicing, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Yeah. And you can do that yeah. so easy with swim bands and doing it and doing it in your own time without getting chucked in the water and trying to have to breathe and panic for air. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, think... it makes a it makes a huge difference. Um, like two, not last year, the year before, um, Lucy Charles and a load of pro triathletes were doing that hundred times hundred in the in the mm. pool for Christmas. So a friend of mine, um, big shout out to Andy Tucker. He's, he's a NHS worker and, you know, we're on the front line with everybody else. So for, for me, when we, when he, he saw this, he was like, oh, do you want to do, do you want to do this 100 times 100? And I was like, you want to do 10K? Oh. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh. and I hadn't swum. All I'd done is swim bands maybe once a week for oh, about my. nine weeks. Um, <laughs> I hadn't swum at all in nine weeks. And um, I said, yeah, okay, I'll give it a try. And we, we made the set. We, we got it done absolutely fine. And I didn't feel ruined for, like, I didn't feel ruined at all the next day. My arm still worked and I carried on as normal. And it was mm. absolutely brilliant to feel that myself, that all I'd done was swim bands. And I went and yeah. swam 100 times 100. I think our, our slowest might have been, like, 145. And our fastest was 130-something, like, low 130s. All off two minutes. <laughs> decent, <including Yeah>. <laughs> It was, it was a bit crazy. It was a bit like, oh, where did that come from? Yeah. But I trained the right movement, so all I had to do was go and execute it. And, you know, with, with you know, recovery and everything else, it absolutely worked fine. I'm not telling yeah. everybody to go and do that. <laughs> yeah, first session back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, first session back. Ten, Callum said 100 times 100. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that, though, because, like, Scott, I remember Scott saying, like, so he'd pretty much done a year of doing CrossFit stuff, weightlifting, um, 
you know, still doing like some key movements, but not really anything triathlon specific. And then he came back to do a race. I can't remember when it was. And he was like, I'm actually better than when I was when I was training yeah. for triathlon. <laughs> Weird, eh? It's mad. It's, yeah, yeah, if you if you train the movement right, you'll get more out of it. And we're more economical. So the idea is we need to be saving as much energy as possible in the swim because we've still got a bike and a run to do. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, everybody will swim really, really hard without realizing it because your, your RPE is completely changed when you're chucked in the water, especially mm-hmm. for anybody new to triathlon. Um, last, well, through lockdown last year, I think I might have said it to you before, uh, we were doing swim bands, I think, twice a week, uh, just doing an online session for people. And one lady, I think it was nine minutes, she shaved off a 1900 meter PB. And that was um. the second time she got back into the lake. It was seven or nine. It was seven or nine minutes, I'm pretty sure. And her, her previous best was swum in a race, drafting in warm water with a wetsuit. Nah. Um, and at the end of summer, so she'd had all summer to get ready for it. And she had a really good race. Um, so, yeah, to shave that amount of time off with no swimming completely blew her mind. And she went, like, I, do, I, do I need to get to the pool? Yeah. Well, you still do. But if we can get to the pool and create better movement dry land, um, that'd be absolutely yeah paramount really that's the golden isn't it we're always trying to gain efficiency economy and fitness yeah Um, but trying to be temperate fitter in the water if we think of all us triathletes we're all quite fit most of us are you know you're you're probably often people go i'm fitter now than i was when i was say 10 years ago or something crazy um but we can't seem to swim well it's Mm -hmm. not because you haven't got the fitness it's just gaining that muscle memory and that movement pattern so i think you said about when would you put this into a season or when, how, how you could structure this into your racing and, and your whole periodization of your, your training mm. plan or your year. If you get light movements done with lots of rep in the winter, so nice and slow, and then gradually build that to bigger resistance. So you don't have to do lots and lots of it, but just even increase the amount of force you can produce or power you can produce. And then we want to turn that power into force, and that's the, the speed of which we move. So as you get nearer to your race, you want to start moving faster through your pull and push rather than stay in the same speed. So swimming isn't a one speed movement. Your arms at the catch are slower than they are at the pull and the push. So it's always a one, two, three, and it all disappears as soon as it gets past your chest. So you want to increase and emphasize the movement speed from here into full extension when well, you know closer you are to your race. So if you're six weeks out from your race, maybe do it once a week where you're really focused on increasing that speed. You might start to see a times tumble in terms of your 400, 200 test or if you're doing a one, you know, a 1K test or a 20 minute a CP20, whatever testing protocol you use, you need to create more power and then, you know, more force for that power. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that was really good, actually. Um, mate, cheers for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, no, and I really hope people have got a lot of value from that. Um, and please do follow Velo Clinic. Um, there will be links to website and social media in the description below. So go and check it out. And um, yeah, definitely look forward to video content that we're going to be doing together because yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be really exciting. Um, and Thank yeah, you. mate, just cheers for coming on. No razor at all. Have a good day, Harry. And I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. Speak to you in a bit.